I'd like to make a reservation for this evening. This is Bruce Willis. Demi and I are in town, and we'd like to take a couple of our friends out to dinner. They've just raved about your place. You only have a table for two. Well, that would be fine, you see, because uh, Demi hates to be gawked at. So what we'll do is we'll have our couple friends eat dinner inside and then bring our food to us uh, out in the limo. <laughs> What, what do you mean, nice try? I am so Bruce Wilt. Hello. <laughs> Bruce Willis? You know, I don't believe the movie was called Lie Hard. Look, I have a date tonight with Christine Chazen, a big executive. I need to take her someplace that will impress her, all right? Yeah, well, if you want to impress someone, why don't you just try being yourself? I hear you, all right? Yeah, hi, this is Al Pacino. I'd like to make a reservation for four tonight. I'm already there. <laughs> oh, well, who, who am I with? All right, give me that Simon. phone. Hello, this is Simon Hempel. Yeah, I'd like to speak to Al Pacino, please. I'll hold. Look, you're living in a dream world if you think Al Pacino's gonna take a phone Shh. call. Oh, I'm living in a dream world, Mr. Willis? <laughs> Hello, Al. Yeah, Simon Hempel here. I just wanna say I'm a big fan of yours. Well, you're welcome, Al. Now, listen, I got my brother Carl here, and he's trying to impress this girl, and he'd do anything he can think of to try and get a reservation at that restaurant. Al says, just try and be yourself. <laughs> yeah, well, I already told him that, Al, and, you know, he's my older brother, so he knows everything. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that'd be great. All right, thanks, Al. See you now. Huh. He said, get there by 8.30. Maybe you can sit with him. <laughs> Freaky world's falling apart like a bunch of bad coffee through a cheap filter. Not Spooner Davis again. Yeah, Spooner Davis. What kind of name is Spooner? Where does the guy live in a cutlery drawer? <laughs> Look, he's not a better TV programmer than you, and that's that. Yeah, but they're killing us with their Mr. Ed stuff over at Nickelodeon. I mean, come on. I've been trained here by Duke to be a creative programmer, and I'm turning into this freak that's getting beat out by a horse that talks and has teeth like Prince Charles. <laughs> Kids, they love talking horses. Yeah, but that's what I don't understand. What's the matter with kids these days? Are they dumb like pumpkins? <laughs> Why would they like something cool, like a talking car, like Knight Rider, or my mother the car? There's a one-two punch. There, now you feel better? Hey, Simon, hey, Libby. Hey, Mitch, you know, I've been meaning to talk to you, my friend. I just read a fascinating study about the role of snacks in the workplace. Well, I'd love to hear about it. You would? Oh, come on, Mitch. You never listen to our ideas. Come on, what are you talking about? Simon, I'm always interested in your ideas. Well, listen to this. It actually said that a diversity of snacks in the workplace actually increased productivity. Fascinating. Where are you going with this, Simon? Well, I think you know. A self-serve baked potato bar. Excuse me? Loving it. Loving it? Simon, you are not just a TV programming whiz. You are a snack whiz as well. You are just an all-around whiz. <laughs> well, thanks, Mitch. <laughs> Um, just a quick question. Why are you so cheery? Did you find a sparrow in the grill of your beamer? Oh, very good. You got me there, Libby. Hey, everybody, watch out. Donna Rickles is here. <laughs> Great. What's the matter, Libby? Duke's going out of town. Really? He didn't tell me about it. Well, he didn't have to. When Mitch is so cheery like that, it means Duke's going out of town and he's in charge. It's like having the worst substitute teacher. Oh, no, I have to disagree with you there. The worst substitute teacher in the world would have to be Mr. Zimmerman. I had him in high school. If he caught you talking, he'd make you swallow a nickel. <laughs> Jeez, to this day, I can't eat anything with Thomas Jefferson's face on it. And how many times do people offer you food with Thomas Jefferson's face on it? What, your mom never made President Burgers? <laughs> I, uh, I gotta go. Doing that here, I have to command a little respect and behave. 
Hello, Simon. Hey, Carl. Wait until I tell you what I'm about to do to Nickelodeon. I'm going to send Mr. Ed to the glue factory and my mother the car. <laughs> uh, Christine, this is my brother, Simon. When it comes to putting together a television schedule, he's the best in the business. Nice to meet you. Hello. <laughs> Christine was named Young Executive of the Year by Business Week. Huh? Oh, well, did you happen to tell her that I was voted floor monitor in our apartment building? <laughs> no, I, I didn't want to oversell you. Uh, Carl did tell me VTV's doing very well. Oh, yeah, well, you know, we're chugging along. But uh, wait till we get our baked potato bar installed, and then the sky's the limit. <laughs> well, it was nice meeting you, Simon. <laughs> I... Gotta go. Dinner okay, at eight. Done. Mwah. Pick me up in the Porsche. I love the way you look in there. You got it. Vroom, vroom. <laughs> Great. Now I gotta rent that Porsche for another day. Have you got everything, Franz? Everything except the feeling in my legs, sir. <laughs> oh, blah, blah, blah. The world does not revolve around you, Franz. All right, everyone, stop what you're doing and listen to me. I am off on a week's safari. Mitch, you're in charge while I'm away. Get ready to start swallowing nickels. Oh, don't let anyone know I'm out of town. And don't call unless it's a matter of life and death. Don't worry about anything, Uncle Duke, and have a safe trip. It's Team VTV all the way. <laughs> hey, way to go, Mitch. Get your big paw off me before I tear it off and poke your eyes out with your own thumb. <laughs> All right, you miserable slackers. The free ride is over. Things are going to be a little different around here. Oh, I see we're getting a baked potato bar, everybody. <laughs> no, you'll get nothing. When I'm finished with you, you'll think whiteout's a snack. Okay, here are the rules. Learn them, live them. You go to the bathroom without asking me, you're fired. You drink coffee without asking me, you're fired. You talk to me without asking me, you're fired. Oh, now, come on, Mitch. You you're don't... fired! Seal his office, burn the contents! Hey, low and lighten up. Oh. You're fired, too! Everybody's fired! You can't fire anyone. Duke Stone hired us. Well, I don't see that old man around here with any luck by Friday, a pack of lions will be ripping him and that stupid butler to pieces. Oh, no. You couldn't even wait till I was out of the building, you nasty little puddle frog. Oh, well, somebody has to be in charge around here. Oh, well, you're both embarrassingly eager and eminently qualified. Libby, you're the obvious choice. You're the backbone of the company. But, you know, if you put too much weight on the backbone, the body collapses. <laughs> Carl, you're a bright and sensitive young man. Yes, sir, and I promise that I will... So, therefore, I know you'll understand when I tell you that I'm leaving Simon in charge. <laughs> See you all in five days. Ah, Franz, while you're down there, push for the lobby, would you? <laughs> This is ridiculous. You don't know the first thing about running a company. He's right. I, I can't do this. I've, ne I've never been a boss before. I mean, what if I have to fire someone and, and they get all mad at me and they go down to New Orleans and, and find a witch doctor and get them to make one of those dolls that they stick all the little pins into? Do you know what the odds are of that happening? 50-50? <laughs> Probably lower. Oh, that's easy for you to say. You're not the one that's got to be sitting in church one day and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, it's like, God! <laughs> no. Simon, you are going to be a great boss and we are going to help you. Yeah, you're going to do just fine. Just be yourself, all right? Yeah, but I'm just a guy who loves TV. I... Well, hey, there you go. Pick one of those uh, role model figures from one of your favorite old TV shows and use them as inspiration. Well, oh. there is one. Simon's Lawn, star date, later that same afternoon. <laughs> the crewmen have installed the baked potato bar without incident. <laughs> Libby, prepare to engage Father Knows Best sequence on my command. <laughs> now! <laughs> Libby, call down to engineering and see what's wrong. They're reporting the machine ate the tape, Captain. <laughs> this is fun. Have them replace it with Donna Reed. We've got to keep this audience. <laughs> ah. Lowen, what are you doing? I'm assing evidence. Hey, Mitch, run down to engineering. Make sure they don't queue up the Happy Days episode where Fonzie wears the windbreaker. <laughs> Damn it, Simon. I'm a network executive, not a fashion consultant. <laughs> Stop. What's wrong with Bones? 
What's wrong with you? Come here for a second. Look, you're the one that told me to pick a role model. Yeah, exactly. I told you to pick one, not morph into one. Look, I need the qualities of James T. Kirk right now. Duke Stone is Starfleet, and he's trusting me with the lives and safety of this his crew, of his enterprise. All right, well, just don't worry about it. I'm here. I'll be your Spock, you know? All right, well, thanks. I'm just trying to do a good job for Duke. Yeah, now, as your second in command, I was thinking that you should loan me the keys to Duke's office. What for? Well, I've, I've got a date with Christine, and like I told you, she's a very high-level executive, and I kind of told her that I was too, so I can't really bring her to this, you know, cubicle thing. So uh, what I need is Duke's office if I want to get a little Vulcan love clutch. You know? Didn't you just hear what I said? Duke Stone is trusting me. I heard what you said. All right, consider this. Duke left you in charge. Therefore, his office is your office. And as brothers, what's yours is mine. So his office is my office. Curse your Balkan logic, spa. <laughs> Our quarry, the African Cape Buffalo, one of the most vicious and foul-tempered creatures on Earth. Hand me my weapon. <laughs> What's this, a camera? What do you want me to do, run up and beat the beast to death? <laughs> All the animals in this preserve are protected, sir. It's a photo safari. <laughs> Why didn't you tell me? Well, because you wouldn't have come. Hunting buffalo is simply not done anymore. Well, if nuclear waste is bad, do I close all my power plants? <laughs> you closed them in 78, sir. Oh, fine. Well, if we're all going to be shackled by political correctness... <laughs> I need the element of danger, the thrill of the hunt. Isn't there something here I can kill it with? <laughs> Try boring it to death with one of your skin-crawling, heebie-jeebies-inducing, melodramatic, long-winded war stories. Red alert! I repeat, red alert! We've got a crisis here! Carl, where have you been? This company's falling apart here! Well, I had a very late Vulcan night with young Christine. <laughs> Somebody is launching a hostile takeover of VTV. What are you talking about? How could that happen? Nobody knew Duke was out of town. Besides, uh, someone would need uh, inside information to strike so quickly. Well, those are all very interesting points you're raising, Carl, but I've got a crisis on my hands oh. here. Jeez, it's like that time Dad lent me his car and it got stolen. <laughs> Except this is worse, because I'm still in it. Oh, Carl, they're going to take me to the chop shop and sell me his used parts. Oh, oh Simon, when you get the chance, we're a little low on Bakos. Low. <laughs> of course. You're the inside source. I'm surprised even you would stoop this low. I didn't do anything. Then why are you so happy? Because I'm finally going to be free of Simon Himple. There's no way he can recover from this. Well, this isn't Simon's fault. No, but uh, he's your brother. And according to page eight of today's Wall Street Journal, your new girlfriend is the mastermind behind the takeover of VTV. Christine? Oh, no, it can't be you, not Spock. <laughs> Simon's law. Star date a few minutes later. Future of V. TV hangs in the balance as an alien force is taking over the ship. <laughs> my first officer and my friend is racked with guilt. As well he should be, seeing it's all his fault. We're into this mess. Jeez, Carl! I can't believe she used me. I like her style. How could I have been so blind? I mean, last night must have all just been a lie. She probably sent me out for more whipped cream just so she could be alone in Duke's office. You think? I think you're like what? Twelve? How could you let this happen? What an idiot! Wait, to get a girl, I rented a Porsche, which she thought was mine. I bought an Armani suit, kept the tags in it so I could return it today. And I'm such an idiot that it worked. Oh, I'll say it worked. It worked so good that we're all going to be working at the unemployment channel. <laughs> Salsa and guacamole is the way to go with these things, although I love all the toppings. 
Right, look, I think the important thing here is not to lay any blame, but to figure out a way to stop this thing in its tracks. Although I will say that I, I do feel partially responsible. Excuse me, partially? Why don't you try fully or completely, universally? All right, even. fine. I'm sorry. I'll quit. Oh, no, 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 no. You're not quitting anything, you little Porsche renting, office stealing, suit returning weasel boy. <laughs> Well, I'm sorry, but I don't discuss hostile takeovers until, like, the fourth date. All right, all right. I've just about had enough for you there, lover boy. Someone get me his little corporate raiderette on the line. I'm going to meet up with her face to face. Hello, operator. Get me a direct line to the darkest depths of Africa. <laughs> it's coming closer. Look at the size of it. Oh, what a magnificent creature. Yes, it is awe-inspiring. Couldn't I just throw a rock at it? <laughs> oh, who on earth can that be? Duke's down here. Hello. Simon, is that you? Oh, if it is, please send me a gun. <laughs> what? Speak up, sir. Yeah, I'm going to need something with a real kick to it. Sir. I can't hear... Oh, crap, the lion's gone dead. What are you yammering about? Sir, hmm? giant buffalo. He's seen us. <laughs> Don't move a muscle. Those monsters can charge up to 60 miles an hour. If you so much as twist an eyebrow, he'll be on us before we can draw breath. <laughs> <laughs> Why do I bring you with me? Hey, you know, I'm really going to miss you guys. Oh, look, I'm over it already. <laughs> hey, artichoke hearts. Mm. Look, Bones, unless you want to go down to sick bay as your own patient, leave us alone for just a minute, please. OK, I'll go down to the lobby and bring up the new boss. <laughs> All right, now I managed to get her up here. Now, what's our plan? Lie like crazy. <laughs> Wait a minute, that's what got us into this. Yeah, and it's going to get us out. <laughs> Guys, she's coming, and she has brought two of the top lawyers in the city with her. Now, look, no pressure, but I have a huge rent to pay. I support an aunt and uncle in San Diego, and I have at least six of those Sally Struthers kids. So, I hope you guys have a good plan. All right, here they are. Come on, up, up, up. Look a lot. Right this way. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I don't think introductions will be necessary, as I'll make this short. Honey, you're home. Oh, this is strictly business. I trust you understand. Of course. Hate the dress. Let's see. You realize one of the main assets of a company is its upper management. As such, I have been given the authority to extend an offer of employment plus bonuses to all executives of VTV. Well, I think I speak for all of us when I say that we can't be bought. Actually, I can. Here's my resume. <laughs> Christine, this meeting is for nothing. As it turns out, we found another buyer. You have another buyer? Yes, we do. We do? No, you don't. I checked. Oh, she said she checked. She didn't check. Well, how do you know? Did you check? I don't have to. When someone says that they've checked, that means that they haven't checked. Well, maybe we should double check. Hard to believe the company fell on his watch, huh? <laughs> Let me do this. No, Simon, shh. shh. Please. Now, Duke Stone will be back tomorrow, and if he finds out that we lost his network, well, he's going to be really, really mad. So, on behalf of myself and my coworkers here, I'm asking you not to buy VTV. Please. All right, that's it, Simon. It's over. This is not going to work. We're bluffing and she knows it. Christine, you beat us. Not fairly and not squarely, but you won. Congratulations. Jeez, I can't believe I let Duke down. Well. Congratulations, you won. Here you go. How stupid do you think I am? Rather, you didn't buy VTV? What do you call that? Well, where I come from, we call it the truth. Yeah, right. I'm on to you. I bet Duke Stone wants me to buy this company. You're trying to set me up. I beg your pardon, but I don't set people up. Give me a break. Your brother rented that Porsche and pretended that this was his office just to sucker me in. Well, he was just being shallow and stupid. Hey, 
<laughs> I've raided enough companies to know when someone's lying. Well, maybe you better raid a few more, Sunshine. I'm not raiding this one. Oh, yes, you are. You know what? Even if I didn't know what you're up to, I still wouldn't want this company. You call this management? Who has a baked potato bar in their office? Look, are you going to buy this place or not? No, forget it. I guarantee you, my company will never buy one lousy share of VTV. If you want, I'll put it in writing. All right, let's get out of here. You guys are good. Wow, your new girlfriend is one tangled piece of string, Carl. You really know how to pick them, huh? Simon, way to go! Yeah, we did it! <laughs> oh. How did you know how to handle a woman like that? Well, she was, uh, she was actually programmed not to trust. Not to trust. <laughs> yeah, as soon as Simon was telling her the truth, it simply couldn't compute. Could not compute, no, sir. <laughs> you know, she actually short-circuited herself. Boy, we've done a good job here. Our work is over, my friend. Over, finito? Let's get out of here. Let's go celebrate. Yeah. Let's go. Can I come? I'll pay. <laughs> I told you he'd win. Yes, you did, didn't you? Uh, I admit he is interesting, but still, I could have lost the whole company. No. We'd have just bought them after they bought us. <laughs> It was worth flying back early to see. And of course, our stock went up 12 points. <laughs> it's fun being us. Yes, it is, isn't it? <laughs> Simon to VTV, prepare to beam up landing party. Energize. Simon, I'm all set. Man, I'm alive. Simon, all set to be beamed up. Simon! In front. 